Remember that the, uh, the session will be recorded and the recording will be on my UNISA over the weekend. Do you have any question before we start with today's session? I know that we have one more minute before we start. Any question that you want to raise before we start? Nobody wants to say anything. So you are all happy. You are all fine. Yes. Okay. Likewise, all sessions are interactive. Therefore, it means during the session when we do exercises, I expect everybody to do the exercise and then we come back. We all do the exercise together or somebody answers the exercise and please make sure that you are able to to write on the chat those who can speak who stay in an environment where it is not conducive enough for speaking or talking over the video um you can write or you can type on the chat i try to make sure that everybody is linked onto the group so that the chat capability can be activated for everybody. Those who joined as guests, uh, the possibilities are you have used your Gmail account or your other accounts, which are not my UNISA account. If you want to be loaded on the chat, you will have to join the group. I will send the link again um, on on WhatsApp for people to join the group. Okay, so let's start with today's session. It's going to be short and sweet. So today we're only going to be doing quartiles, which is study unit three, and tomorrow we will do the probabilities from 12 until two o'clock. And by the end of tomorrow's session, you should be able to uh, do all your assignment questions for Assignment one. So the agenda for today, how I planned it uh, from for 30 minutes, we're going to just do the basic introduction to quartiles, looking at quartile one, two, three, and interquartile range. And then from half past seven until run about 10 to eight, we will do the five number summary and some exercises in between. And then we'll take a break so that we can stand away from where we are. And also those who want to go get water, they can go get water and come back. Then we will do more exercises. Not too many, but at least enough for you to be able to know how to answer some of the questions that might be asked regarding the quartiles. Okay, any questions before I, I move on? If there are no questions, then we can dip in. No questions from me. Thank you. If in the absence of no of questions, then today's session, by the end of today's session, you should have uh, or you should be able to learn how to find the quartile position and how to find the quartile value. You should be able to calculate the interquartile range from the quartiles and you should be able to identify the five number summary uh, values and you should be able to construct a box plot or read at least a box plot if you are given in the exam or in your assignment as well. So what are the quartiles? A quartile is a way um, you can split your data into four parts. So say if we know that uh, we have 20 values, we can split them into equal parts of 25% pods that every value will fall within that 25%. Uh, 25%. And the first 25% will represent your quartile one. So any value, your quartile one will be the value that is most of the values are 25% of the values are less than 
or 75% of the values are more than that value. That is quartile one. Quartile two, I should have switched off the notifications. Quartile two, it's the same as your median. Remember last week on Saturday, we did the as measures of central location. And we said one of the measures of central location was the quartile. Quartile two is the same, oh, sorry. One of the measures of central location is the median. Quartile two is the same as your median, which represent 50% of the values will be below that value and 50% of the values will be above that value. And quartile three represent 75% of the values will be less than or below that value, and 25% of um, the values will be bigger than that value. And in order for us to find these quartiles, we first have to find the position. But before you can even locate that position, your data needs to be ordered from lowest to highest, like the same thing we did with the, the median. So since we first need to find the position, and then the data also needs to be sorted from lowest to highest in order for us to identify the position. Then once we have the position, we should be able to locate the quartile value. How do we do that? How do we locate the quartile value? Quartile one, which the position for that quartile one, we find it by using the formula n plus one divided by four. Once we have sorted the values and we calculate this quartile one, we will find that position there. And we will use that formula to find the position. For quartile two, since it's the same as the median, n plus 1 divided by 2. In the exam, all these formulas you will not be given. So you need to know how to find these positions by heart. You must always remember that for the quartiles, you will have to know the formulas by heart when you go to the exam. In case your exam is a written one where you have to go to the base. But if you're writing online, you will have access to this formula because you will have your books with you. The third quarter is 3 multiplied by n plus 1 divided by 4. And that will give you your position where your n value is just the number of observations. So if they gave you 10 values, 10 will be your n. So let's look at an example. But before we look at an example, Let's understand one, uh, the rules, because when you apply these formulas and you're calculating these formulas, there are values that will be whole numbers, there are values that might appear as fractions, there are values that will appear as a non-fractional value like 0 0.25 or 0 0.75. You need to know how to work with those values. And to do that, <clears throat> if the result of your quartile position is a whole number, since your data is sorted, the value where you are will be your quartile. So let's say, for example, we calculated our quartiles. So let's say our values are 3, 5, 9, 15, 20, 25, 21, and 30 and 33. Let's say these are our quarters. So we calculate quartile one and we find after we use the formula and we find that quartile one is on position number three. It's a whole number. So because it's a whole number, so we just start counting one, two, three, and that will be our quartile value. And that's how we're going to use the quartiles position to locate our quartile value. So therefore, it means our quartile value will be value number nine. Since my data is sorted in order, it's in order. So what happens if the value becomes a fractional half? 
So let's say quartile one, we calculated the values and quartile one is equals to 2.5. Let's say for argument's sake, the answer we get, we end up with is 2.5. So when it's 2.5, we say this value, the position is a fractional position. So therefore it means it will fall between two values. We will locate it between the two values. So 1, 2.5 will be somewhere in between those two values. When it is between the two values, we're going to take an average. What do I mean? It says I'm going to say 5 plus 9 divide by 2, and that will give me my quartile value. And my quartile value from the position 2.5 will be 9 plus 5 divide by by two, which will give me seven. And that will be my quartile value. The other time, you will find that the value that you get from the quartile is not a fractional half. So let's say the value, let's say quartile one, when you calculate, and you find that the value is 2.75. When it's 2.75, we're going to round up this position and say it is closer to 3 because the majority of the values are 0 0.75 closer to 3 and 0 0.25 less than 2. So it cannot be 2, so we're going to round it up to 3. Therefore, we're going to count and say 1, 2, 3, and therefore our quartile 1 position will be position it will be nine. In position three, it will be nine. What happens as well if the quartile position, let me write it right there at the top. I'm going to remove this now again so that everybody can see. So let's say the answer you get is 2.25. When is 2.25? We can round and estimate that this says the position is on position number two. So we round down because it's not closer to three, but it's also 25% closer to two. So it means we can round down the value and estimate that the position is on position number two. And therefore we go ahead and say our quartile value is five. And that's how we do the quartiles. So let's look at an example in more detail with the real data. So let's say we have this sample data. And we can count how many there are. There are nine values that we are given from the sample. If we want to calculate quartile number one, we know the formula is n plus one divided by four. Quartile position. We substitute n is 9, so it will be 9 plus 1 divided by 4. It will give us 2.5. And that position, since it's 2.5, it will be located between 12 and 13. Since it's located between two values, we're going to take an average between those two values. So we're going to add 12 and 13 and divide it by 2, and we get the quartile one is 12.5. And we can do the same calculation for quartile two and quartile three. Any questions before I move on to the next part? If there are no questions, okay, I see there is a question. Uh, Sam, your hand is up. And your hand is gone. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Good evening, everyone. All right, my question is, uh, the quartile number, can it be the, the number that is not on the number that we have? We have 11, 12, 13. So if they ask me what is the value for the quartile 1, then I'll be, I'll be saying 12.5, whereas we don't have 12.5 there. Yes. It can be a value that is not on there because if it's 
if the position is located between two values, let's say this was 13, or oh, sorry, this was 14, then the quartile value will be 13. It, even though it was not on there, but it will be the value that is there because of you're going to take the average of the two values. Okay, I do understand. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, so let's look at now how to calculate quartile two and quartile three. So we already did quartile one. So we know that quartile one is 12.5. Calculating quartile two, remember the formula for quartile two is n plus one divided by two. So n is nine plus one is 10 divided by two. It tells us that the position is on position number five. So it's the fifth position. One, two, three, four, five. Therefore, 16 will be our quartal two. And since 16 is our quartal two, uh, it is also called the median. You must also remember that that quartal two is the same as the median. It's, and for this data set, it's 16. To get to quartal three, we calculate quartile three, remember the formula is three times n plus one divided by four. So it's three times nine plus one, which is 10 times three is 30 divided by four. The position will be 7.5 and you can count one, two, three, four, five, six, 7.5 will be located between the two values. And we do the same, we take the average of the two and the quartile three value is 18 plus 21 divided by two, which gives us 19.5. Quartile one and quartile three, these are non measures of central location and quartile two is a, a measure of central location. And that's how you find the quartiles. When you have the quartiles, you can calculate what we call an interquartile range. The same as what we do with the variation, measures of variation then before, which is the range. Remember the range, your highest value minus your lowest value. So for the quartiles, your interquartile range uses the values of your quartiles, not your positions, but the values. So it means we're going to use the 12.5 and the 19.5 because we're going to be using the values, not the position. So let's learn how to calculate the interquartile range. An interquartile range takes your largest quartile, which is quartile three, minus your smallest quartile, which is quartile one, and it tells you the spread of your values in the um, at the range of 50 percentile. An interquartile range is also a measure of variability and it's also not influenced by the outliers or the extreme values because it doesn't look at those, it looks at where 50 percent of the, the values um, of 25% uh, and 75% of the values are located in. Okay. From the data set that we had previously, we know that there were nine of them and we calculated our quartile one and we also found our quartile three to calculate our interquartile range Remember, interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1. So therefore, our Q3, Q3 minus Q1. Not the position, but the values. And our Q3 value was 19.5. And our Q1 value was 12.5. So it's 19 minus 12.5. And the interquartile range is 7. And that's it with quartiles. Later on, we will discuss how we calculate or how we, we identify the five number summaries using the quartiles. 
and how do we plot the box plot? For now, there is your exercise. If you look at this data, the data is sorted because it starts from 159, 170, 172, up to 257. It is in order. Applying the same method that we did, you can answer which question is incorrect. But before you go and answer this question, remember, you can, for now, you can go find quartile one position by using n plus one divide by four and go find quartile two position by using n plus one divide by two and go find the quartile three position by using three times n plus one divide by four. Once you have found the positions, then you can go find the values. So once you have the positions, then you can go and locate your values from there. And then we will come back and discuss the answer just now. For now, that's your exercise for 10 minutes or for actually for less than 10 minutes for five minutes and then we'll do the answers just now. Are you still busy? Or are you done? I am done. Anybody who's still yes, done? Yes, you're busy. Done. Okay, those who are still busy, you have one minute. Uh, uh -oh. 
Okay. <clears throat> Who want, uh, we're going to come back to the options, which one is correct and which one is not correct. For now, I just want to do the positions. Who wants to go with me and do the positions with me? Who's volunteering themselves? Anyone? Any volunteer? Nobody. Sam, your hand is up. You can. I'm volunteering. Thank I'm you. Volunteering. Let's go. Yes. So for quarter one. For quarter one, the quarter one is four. Yeah, I got let's, it. But let's, let let's help those who didn't know uh, what where did you get four from. I got four by counting the number of observations, which is 15. Then I said n plus one. That will be 15 plus one is 16. And then 16 divided by four gives me the answer of four. And the position for quartal one. The position for quartal one is four. Is four. Okay. Yes. And let's continue to the next one, quartal two. Quartal two, I uh, substitute that n by that 15, and I got 16 over 2, which is 16 divided by 2 is 8, so the position is 8. Okay, and quartile three. Uh, oops, quartile three, I said, I use the formula of three into n plus one over four. Then I got 16 into three, which is 48, divided by four, and I got 12. So the position is 12. And the position, sorry for my pen. Position for quartal three is 12. Position is 12. Okay, so since we know all the positions, we can go and find the values. So the values for quartal one. The value for quartal one is 173. Quartal one is one seven three. Quartal two, because it starts from there, we count from one fifty nine, one two three four. Since the position was four, and that gives us one seven three. And for quartal two, it's two o one. It's two o one because if we know that is four five six seven eight, that will be quartal. Quartal two, which is the same as the median. And quartal three. Quartal three is two one seven. Uh, starting from eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Quartal. Oh, I should have switched off my WhatsApp. Quartal three. So if we're going to look at the answer, we are looking for the incorrect answer. So now you have all the values, you can just come in tick, 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 and say which one is incorrect. So if we look at option number one, position of quartile one is four, and we know that it was four, so that is correct. 
the position of quartal two is eight. We can see there the answer was eight. That is correct. The position of the median is eight. Do you agree? Yes. Yes, you agree because I already also gave you the answer there. Therefore, it's correct. The position of quartile three is 12. And we know that the position was 12 and we can find that answer there. The value of quartile three is 216. The value of quartile three is 217. Therefore, this is the incorrect one. That will be the option you were looking for. Who said that is difficult? Very easy. Wow. <laughs> okay. So we can move into our next segment, the five number summary. Any questions before we I can go back to the question. Do you have any questions before we move on? Anybody who is still lost and needs some clarity? Sam, your hand is still up or is it the historical hand? No, it's not historical. I tried to use the chart there to give the answer on the chart, but it said they failed to send. Okay, no problem. We can always chat like you've always been doing. Okay. Thank you. Any other question? Nothing? So it's half past seven. So we said in March. from half past seven, we're going to look at the five number summary and the box plot. Since we know how to calculate the interquartile ranges and and the quartiles, we can use the quartiles to find. I think my slides are repeating themselves to find the five number summary. So <clears throat> if we look at this, is what we call a box plot. Is a summary of the five number summary of your quartiles, where it also includes your minimum value and your maximum value. If we look at the blue box, starting from there to there, that is the blue box, that's what we call the box. And the whiskers are those 25% length that goes out. At the beginning of the box, at this point, that's where we identify our quartile one value because 25% of the values are less than that value. And 75% of the values are more than. In the middle of the box, it will tell you your median. If there is a 25-25 spread between the two values, then your data is symmetric. We will deal with that later on. If it's closer to quartile three, we say it's skewed to the left. If it's closer to quartile one, the, I mean, I'm referring to the median, then we say it's skewed to the, to the left. And at the end of the block, at the end of the box, you will have quartile three value defined, which tells you 75% of the values are more than uh, that quartile three value, and 25% of the values, oh sorry, are less than that value, and 25% of the values are less than that value. And at the end of the whisker will be your maximum value. Sometimes on your box plot, you might find that there is a outlier lying somewhere there or lying somewhere there. If it's outside of the range of your data, we always ignore the outliers and only report on the minimum values and the maximum values. So uh, your five number summary is made up of 
your minimum value, your quartile one, your median, your quartile three, and your maximum value. There are five numbers. If, for example, these are our values, we are also able to take the box whisker plot and calculate what we call the interquartile range. Remember, at the beginning, we used quartile one and quartile three. Yes, we still use the values because we know that quartile one is 57, so this value should have been there. Uh, it's skewed a little bit, but that 57 should be somewhere there. So 57 is our quartile three value, and 30 is our quartile one value. So we take 57 minus 30 gives us 27. Uh, so that 70 should be here. And that gives you the interquartile range. And this is your box, box plot or box whisker plot and your five number summary. It gives you the spread, the center by the mean of the, by looking at the median. And it also tells you the shape of your data by looking at how far your values are from one another. So let's look at the spread in more detail. How do I know if my data is skewed or not skewed? So using the measures or the five number summary to find the distribution or the shape of your data, it's a little bit challenging. Um, but it's also easy to look at it. I will advise you to always remember this, the lowest, the bottom part, the bottom one, where it looks at only the quartiles. So if the distance between the median, which is quartile two, if the distance between quartile two and quartile one is greater than the distance between quartile three and quartile, and quartile two, then we know that your data is left skewed because we're looking at that distance, the difference. If the median, which is your quartile two, if the difference between it and quartile one is bigger than the difference between quartile three and the median, it's left skewed. If they are the same, if the distance are the same, then it's symmetric. If the distance is less than for the median and quartile one is less than the distance between quartile three and, and the median, then we say it is right skewed. How do I present this on a data, on a box, box, box plot? Let's start with the left skewed. So let's say our box plot looks like this. I'm going to draw it here. So this will be our box. I'm going to draw our box first. If this is our box and this is our whisker and that is our whisker, I'm not interested in the whiskers because at the beginning, this is quartile one and this is quartile three. It says if the value or the median, which is quartile three, if the distance of the median to and quartile one, if it's bigger than the distance between quartile three and the median, it is left skewed. What does that what does that mean? So it means it looks like this. So there is your quartile your quartile your quartile two. So the distance, if you look at this, this is bigger than that distance. The distance is smaller this side. And it means this data is left skewed. For symmetric, if this is our box, and this is our whisker, and this is our whisker, and this is quartile one, and this is quartile two, oh, sorry, quartile three, Therefore, it will be just in the middle. The median will be in the middle. For the right skewed, it says, if the distance between quartile one and the median is less than the distance between quartile three and the median, then it is right skewed. 
So this is our box. And that is our whisker. And that is our whisker. Our whisker. Remember that the beginning is quartile one. And then this is quartile two, quartile three. Oh, I, keep, I keep on saying quartile two. This should be quartile three. If quartile, if the distance between the median, which is quartile two, and quartile one, if it's smaller, so let's say that distance is smaller between those two, since this is quartile two, the distance is smaller than that distance. Therefore, it will be right skewed. And that's how you identify the shape using the quartile. The easy one as well. If they are giving you the mean and the median in your question, because if, for example, let's say we go back to one of the examples. Let's say we take this. You are able to calculate as well the mean of this data set. You know how to calculate the mean. You store the values, you calculate, or you sum how many there are, you sum all of the values and divide by how many there are, and that will give you your mean. It will give you your mean of this sample because it's just the sum of your observation divided by how many there are. And then you will look at the distribution by saying if the mean and the median are the same, then it is symmetric. If the mean is less than the median, if the mean is less than the median, we say it is left skewed. We did this on Saturday. If the mean is bigger than the median, or we can say if the median if the median is smaller than the mean, which is the same as the mean is bigger than the median, which is mean the same thing. The mean will be bigger than the median in this instance. Then we'll say this is positive or right skewed, whereas this is negatively skewed, negative or left skewed. And if the mean and the median are the same, if the mean is the same as the median, we say it is symmetric 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 and that's how you're also going to identify the range so you don't have to go and think of the quartiles how oh, how do i say see all this and 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 you can use the mean and the median if you have the data set if you are not given the data set that would give you the mean if they they will give you the mean, the quartile, and all the values, and you can find the distribution. Any other question? Going back to our slide. Any questions? If there are no questions, there are not so many questions when it comes to the distribution, but I have found one where we can end the box plot. So there is one question. Look at it. In one minute, I'm going to ask one of you to give an answer. The following measures can be obtained from a box plot, except look at the options. You don't have to answer now. Just now I'm going to ask. Okay. Have you found the one that is not a value of the box plot? Yes. Which one? Uh, it should be number three. That's the mode. That's the mode. The mode is the one that is not 
part of the box plot. Remember your box plot is your smallest value, your box, which has the quartal one, quartal two, and quartal three, and the maximum value. And from here, you can calculate the IQR, which is your interquartal range. And we know that quartal two is also called the median. The median. And this is also called the, the lower quartal. It's also called the lower quartal, and this is also called the upper quartal. Next exercise. We have 10 more minutes, so there will be one more last exercise and then we take a 10 minutes break. We'll see each other at eight. Remember, you will need to sort your data from lowest to highest first. That is something I forgot totally.
Uh, hello. Yes. Uh, should we answer? Uh, uh, I think. That, are, we, are we done? Uh, I think so. Just a second. Not yet. No. <laughs> no. No, I think okay, let's, not. Let's, let's do it this way. Um, mm. It's 10 to 8. I'm going to give those who are still busy extra more time. When we come back from the break, because anyway, we're going to do more exercises. There's nothing more to do from my side. So it's just exercises after exercise after exercise. So take your time. Uh, let's meet again. Do you, do you want to come back at 5 to or oh, at 8 o'clock? 8 o'clock? 8. At 8 o'clock. Okay, so those who are busy, take your time to do continue working. At 8 o'clock, we will come back. I'm going to leave the screen up.
please make sure that you 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 switch off your videos. Kabile, please turn off your video. Thank you. One more minute. I hope everybody's back. <clears throat> While we wait for the rest to come back, anyone with a question? Or you can just tell me how is today? How was the session for today? Are you still all right? So far, so good. So far, so good. Yes. Like I said, remember, after today's session, you should be able to answer some of the questions from your assignment and then tomorrow we will finish off with the probabilities and you should be able to answer all the questions for assignment one <clears throat> if you need help please don't hesitate to ask we're here to help okay 
Welcome back. It's eight o'clock. We can now, everybody has had a chance to look at the exercise. So someone volunteering. Who is volunteering? Nobody. Serious. Was it that difficult? Ha, Sam. Are you going to answer all the questions today? So, go ahead, Sam. You can unmute. Okay. I started by arranging the observation from lowest to the highest. Mm -hmm. It should okay. be three, mm -hmm. four, mm -hmm. six, yes. seven, yes. nine, yes. ten, yes. fourteen, yes. and twenty-three. Okay. So after that, I counted how many uh, that will be my N, which is my number of observations. They are eight. Okay. All right, then I started by finding the positions of quartile one, two, and three. Okay. Q1 is N plus one over four, which will be eight plus one over four. That will be nine over four. The answer is 2.25, and I rounded it off to 2. And then Q2. N plus 1 over 2, which is equal to 9 over 2 is equal to 4.5. So I left it there, then I went to Q3. I'm sorry, wait for me. Q3, I said 3 into N plus 1 all over 4, which is equal to 3 into 9 over 4. That will be 27 over 4. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. I'm I'm writing it step by step. Okay, okay. Because I'm not going to assume that everybody knows math. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that will be twenty-seven 27. over four. That's what you said, ne? Yes. And then the yes. answer will be six point seven five. Then I rounded it off to seven. Okay. okay. Then I got Q1, 2, and 3. So I know Q2 is my median. So I wanted the mean. The mean, I added all the numbers and then divided them by eight. And I got my point. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, I was still busy changing the color. Uh, you, you were talking about the mean or the sorry. median? Sorry. I was talking about the, the median first. Okay, so the median. So the median value, since I got 4.5, then I went to my observation, the one that is in an ordered form. Then I counted 4.5, it landed between 7 and 9. So I said seven plus nine divided by two, then I got eight. The median, which is Q2, you, it's between seven and nine. So you said yes. seven plus nine divided by two. 16 divided by two. 16 divided by two, which is equals to eight. Yes. So then the 
at eight. Right, then I went to the mean. I added all the values and then okay. divided them by eight. And then the answer was eight. The mean is the sum of all the values divided by n, and the answer you get is eight. eight. Yes. Okay. Right. No, then, no, sorry. The answer I got is 9.5. Oh, the answer you got is 9.5. It's not eight. Yes, not eight. So you're adding 4 plus 16, uh, 4 plus 14 plus 6, and divide them by eight, and yes. you get. I got 9.5. 9.5. Yes. Then I got Q1. The, the position of Q1 is 2. I went to my observations and I counted 2. The 2 is on 4. So therefore, Q1 is equals to 4, the value of Q1. Okay. Then I went to Q3. Mm -hmm. Since I got since I got seven, then I went to my observation and I counted seven. It landed on 14. So the value for Q3 is 14. Okay, so now you are able to answer the questions that are asked. Yes. Okay. We're looking for the incorrect one. Number one. The median. You got it is right. It's correct. Okay. So that is correct. The first quarter, not the position, but they want the first quarter. The value. They say it's four. You got it as four. Yes. The third quarter, not the position, but the quarter. So you got it got 14. It 15, which we got it as 14. The mean which is the sum of all the values, divide by how many they are, you got it as 9.5, which is the correct answer from there. Is the distribution symmetric? No. The distribution is not symmetric, you should say, is not symmetric because the value of your mean is and not equal to the value of your median because we we calculated what the mean is and what the median is. The mean is 9.5 and the median is 8. So therefore, the data is skewed. Any question? If there are no questions, then we can do more exercises. The next exercise. And next time, can I have somebody else who is not Sam? Or whose name does not start with Sam or doesn't rhyme with Sam? Okay.
Are we done? Somebody still busy? Talk to me. Are you still busy? I'm so busy. When you are done, let me know. I'm done. Okay, I'm done. Yes, since you are done, let's do the other time. While, while you're still unmute, let's, <laughs> <laughs> let's go. <laughs> okay, so um, the daughters already arranged in order, being uh, one to six. So I worked out what Q1 is. So it's N plus one divided by four, which will equal to six plus one, because N is equal to six, seen as there's six values. That gave me seven divided by four, which equals to uh, 1.75. And then rounding it up, um, I said it equals to two. So then I went up to the data set and then um, number two, I put it as Q1 already. Okay, then I worked out Q2, which is N plus one divided by two which will equal my seven, so, sorry, I already added it there, seven divided by two, which equals to three and a half. And then rounding that up, I got four, which um, the value four was my Q2, up in the data set. Anybody? <coughs> 
around the new app. When so, is the fractional? Because it's 0.5, what do you do? Around the up average. Um, oh. Yes, I'm trying to, to tell you where you're going wrong. Okay. Uh, because it's a fractional half, it's located between the two values. You're going to take the average of the two values. So you're going to say 3 plus 4 divided by 2, which is 7 divided by 2, and your answer will be 3.5, not 4. We don't round it up when it's 50% because it's, 50, it's 0 0.5, which is 50%. It's 50% closer to 3 and 50% closer to 4. So you cannot decide that is going to be four or is going to be three. So it has to be in the middle. Okay. Okay, you are on the right track. Let's continue. Okay, and, and then three. Quartal three, I went uh, three, um, three square, um, sorry, three, three, times. three times N plus one divided by four. Mm -hmm which is seven times three divided by four. Mm -hmm. Which um, came out to 21 divided by four. And that gave me an answer of 5.25. Mm -hmm. And okay, then so I made the same then mistake where I then rounded it up where I was then supposed to take the value of the two. No, because round it's point two five, we round down so it remains as five. We don't okay. round it up. Yes. Okay. okay so I've got five there. And then my interquartal range. But you didn't go find the values. So we found oh, so one, so we found that one is quartile, that's quartile three, we do find, and then, quart, sorry, quartile two, quartile three, we go to quartile position three. five, so that will be your know, quartile three there. Okay. Okay. And then my interquartile range <clears throat> is Q3 minus Q1 which is five minus three, oh, sorry, minus two, which gave me three. And if we answer the questions given to us. Okay, I used the, the data that I previously had. I said number two was Are you highlighting to give me a? I said uh, number two was wrong. Oh, you said number two was wrong. So number two is asking the value of quartile two is three. So what was the value of quartile two? The value is 3.5. Yeah. So this number two will be wrong. The position we did find was 1.75, which is correct. And the median, we did find it's 3.5 because it's the same as quartile two, which is correct. The value of the third quartile, we said it's five, which is correct. The interquartile, is three. Is correct. Any questions? Anybody who is still unsure? You see, it helps to speak out so that we are able to see where you're going wrong. We can correct you immediately. And now you know you won't make that same mistake again. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> no problem. You are welcome. Your next question. Uh, I'm going to skip this one for now. I'm going to go to the next one. 
I'm going to skip that one. I'm going to this one. We've done this previously, but I just want to highlight something here. As you can see on this question, it's not related to what we did today, but it's related to everything that we did the previous time. You should be able to calculate the range of your data, which is your highest value minus your lowest. You should be able to calculate your interquartile range, which is quartile one, your so quartile three value minus quartile one value. You should be able to calculate the coefficient of variation. Remember, it is your coefficient of variation is your standard deviation divided by the mean. We did this on the calculator the last time. Multiply by 100, which is what we did on Saturday. The other thing that they are asking you here is. The range and the interquartile range are measures of variation. What we are doing today is the interquartile. It's also part, it is part of the measures of variation as well. It's a continuation of what we started last week. And yet they are also asking coefficient of variation. It's a measures of central tendency. So you will have to go and check where did we discuss coefficient of variation as a matter of as a measure of central tendency or as a measure of variation? I cannot give you all the answers uh, for your assignment as well, but I'm, I can just point you to the right direction. So this is one of your assignment question. I think I just wanted to highlight those. The two uh, only option one is what we are doing today and option three, option four. That's what we are doing today. OK, going back to our question. And I think this will take us to the end. Um,
Are we done? We have one minute actually to wrap up. Are we done? In the absence of nobody saying anything. We are done. Okay. I am just going to give you the answer. And you can compare my answers to your answers. So we know what the quartal one position is. Our quartal one position. We find it by using n plus one divided by four, and we find the value is one comma five. Because there are six, it's six divided by four, which it gives one comma five. Therefore, the quartal value, quartal one value will lie between two values, one in uh, position one and position two, which is 44 plus 57. So therefore, if we take the average of the two, 44 plus 57, we get divide by two, we get 50.5. Agree? Yes. Yes. And for quartile two, we use n plus one divided by two. There are six, uh, five, it's six divided by two, which then it is equals to three. That is the position. And if we count one, two, three, it's 85 is 85 is our quartile three value. Sorry, our quartile two value. And quartile three, three times n plus one divided by two, six times three divided by two gives us, oh, divide by four, sorry, my bad, divide by four gives us 4.5. And it means it lies between position number four and position number five. So if we add 108 plus 206 divided by two, we get 157. And we can also check the distribution of the data, because I can see the other question here says the distribution of the data by checking if, for example, the median minus Q1 value and Q3 minus the median If the sign is less than, therefore it is positive or right skewed. If it's equal, then it is symmetric. If it's greater than, then it is left or negative skewed. So you're going to find the, the values there and check the position answer there. So if you take median value, which is 85, and the quartal three value is 157. If you take 157 minus 85, you will find that the value, the answer there you will get is 72. If coming here, the median, which is 85, if you take 85 minus quartal one, which is 50.5, the answer you will get here will be 8.5. So it's 85 minus, what was, what is the answer? 
85 minus 30.5, 80.5, 85 minus 50.5 is 34.5. 34.5. So 34, if I change the color now, let me do that. 34 and 72, what sign will that be? 34 is less than 72. Sorry, are we having connectivity issues? I'm also battling to hear, I think it's frozen or something. It is 108 plus 44 plus 206, plus 85, plus 57, equals to 500, divide by 5, which tells us the mean is equals to 100. So option 1 is incorrect. The value of Q1, not the position, but the value, it should be 50.5. Yeah, it says it's 57, so therefore it's incorrect. The position should be for Q2, should be equals to 2. The position of Q2 is 3, and this says is 2, therefore it's incorrect. The value of Q3, Q3 value is 157. So that is the correct answer. And we know that because the sign there was less than, which is positively skewed, therefore that was incorrect. should be able to answer the same question and do the interquartile range, which is just the Q3 minus Q1 value and find what the value is. If we go back to our question, our Q3 was 157 and our Q1 was 50.157. And therefore, we get the answer of 157 minus 50.5, which is 106.5. Which is but I guess that's not what they were asking us. They were asking the question, the interquartile range is equals to the range, no, less than the range. The interquartile will always be less than the range. It's 
smallest value. Remember when we need to draw the box in between. Remember that is the smallest value. That's Q1, Q3, that's the highest, the highest value. That's the highest value. What the question was asking, interquartile is the same as the range. We know what the range is. Range is highest value minus the lowest value. So if I look at this, the highest value is there and the smallest value is there. So it cannot be equals to the interquartile range. So the range cannot be equals to the interquartile range because the range, interquartile range we calculated from here to here. So this is IQ interquartile range. Whereas from there to there, we calculate the range. The interquartile range is always going to be smaller because it only looks at the quartiles. And when we calculated the values of your interquartile, we can see that it was 106 and none of these values are correct. So the only correct answer here is option number two. In conclusion, oh, there's another exercise, um, but this comes from your workbook. So if you look at this, they give you the quartiles, they give you the median, they give you the mean. You can also apply the same logic as this to answer the question or you can use the measure of central location. So if we go back, you are given the median and you are given the mean. So you can also find the distribution of your data. Okay, in conclusion, since I took your 15 more minutes, what you have learned today is to find the quartile position and the value, to calculate the interquartile range, to identify the five number summary and to also construct a box plot or to know how the box plot is constructed. And that concludes today's session. Thank you for joining and thank you for coming. If you have any other question, you can find me on my UNISA or you can find me on WhatsApp. See you tomorrow between 12 and 2 when we do basic probabilities. Enjoy the rest of your night. Good night. Bye. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.